we're going to be going over here issuing, exercising, and the expiration here of some stock options. Now the expiration here of these options, that's where they're not exercised and some of the options actually lapse or they expired here. So for example here on 11X1 Corporation A's stock options included here. Uh, first here, they granted options to executives to purchase 10,000 shares of $5 par common stock. The options were granted here in 11X1 here and were exercisable here two years after they grant, the date they were granted if the, um, uh, the uh, executive or the employee was still employed by the company here. And um, they're, in this case, they're going to be a two-year vesting or service period required uh, for the employee before they can exercise any of these options. And the option price here was set at $40 per share. And compensation expense was estimated to be $900,000 on this option. So the company says that's the value of these options here. And they're going to be, have to be expense based on that value. And it's going to be based, uh, they were based here on a fair value pricing model. Now, the following stop stock option activities were here. Well, there were 9,000 options were exercised here on 51X3 here when the market price was $60 per share. And the remaining 1,000 odd options here were expired here on 11X4. The company set this expiration date and the employees decided not to exercise their options uh, for a uh, uh, at that date here. So 1,000 options expired. Okay, so let's go and look at how we uh, record this here. So in this case, we're going to be using the fair value option method here. That's where the market price of the stock really has no relevance when it comes to uh, making our accounting entries. Now, it certainly does for the uh, person or the, uh, in this case, the employee buying these options. But when it comes to the accounting, we're, it, our accounting here is going to be based on the stock option price that the company set here at $40 per share. Okay, so the options uh, grant date here is 11X1, and we really don't make any entries here on the grant date. We just note it here in our records. But, okay, our grant date is 11X1. We have a two-year vesting or service period required on these options. And the stock options uh, were exercised here on 51X3. So what we have to deal with is this vesting or service period here. That's where you take the expense of the value here of the options and you have to expense them out during the service period here or the vesting period. So let's go down and look at that. So what we do is we set up our compensation expense account here on our income statement for the value of those uh, of those options here and we our total value we estimated or it, it would say the expense on these options or compensation expense that's what uh, the employees or the executives in this case would be compensated for if they exercise if these ec uh, for these options here so what we do here um, what we do for the two-year service period is we have to set up this compensation expense on our income statement. So we debit it here for $450,000 for each of, at the end of each of those two uh, years here required for vesting. And that'll be at 1231X1 and 1231X2. Each year we get $450,000. And that's based on our total compensation expense or value of these uh, options was estimated to be 900,000. So one half of those, uh, each year here that equals 450,000 per um, per year here and that's really based on the years of service here those years of two years of vesting service required. So we uh, recognize our expense evenly for each of those two years. Now, what we have is the associated entry for that. And we move over to our balance sheet here. And we have a, set up a paid in capital for stock options here on our balance sheet. So what we would do here at the end of each of those two year vesting years, again, we would just credit the paid in capital here for 450,000 for each of those two years. So we debited our compensation expense here, recognize it on our income statement as compensation expense by that amount each year here and then move on our ink on our balance sheet here for our equity account we set up this paid in capital for stock options by uh, crediting that same amount that we expensed out each year okay so now comes along the first our, 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 where these options are going to be exercised here so we're going to exercise the stock or the employees or the executives are going to exercise these stock options at the set option price here $40 per share and 9,000 shares here 
of the options are going to be exercised again on 5.1 x3. So what we do here is we uh, would would have increased our cash account here. Company would have received cash here well, 9,000 shares at the option price here, $40 per share. Uh, debit cash here for $360,000. Okay, so what we've what we would do now here we have to move down to our paid-in capital for our stock options and this is where we'd be reducing that paid-in capital for the amount of those options here and that we're going to be just transferring over into additional paid-in capital here yeah, again an equity account here on our balance sheet here okay so we're just going to be moving here from one equity account into another so what we do here on 51x3 well we would debit or reduce our paid in capital here by eight hundred and ten thousand dollars so that's based on the fact here that our total paid in capital was nine hundred thousand for those stock options and nine thousand of the ten thousand were exercised so nine tenths of nine hundred thousand here would be reduced in our paid in capital reduce it here by eight hundred and ten thousand dollars okay so we've taken care of our paid in capital here we have reduced that now let's move up to when we're going to actually issue the common stock here to the employees so uh, that would be at its par value so nine thousand shares at a five dollar par and this is par value here in our common stock times five dollars per share we'll credit or increase our common stock here for forty five thousand dollars so common stock here is issued nine thousand shares here on five one x3 then we have to deal with additional paid in capital to our common stock here so uh, that is going to be really a balancing entry here and you, you will just go through that here so what we would do here we have our cash we debited that here for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars then our paid in capital here we would have also debited that here now remember the paid in capital here is a equity account whereas our cash is an asset account so the signs are di uh, different here debit here is an increase debit here is a reduction so uh, nonetheless here we're going to balance our debits with our credits so what we're to determine additional paid in capital or common stock so uh, we look at that debit amount here of eight hundred thousand here debit here of three hundred sixty thousand here now we have a credit to our common stock here of forty five thousand so the we need another crediting amount here for the balance so what we would our additional paid in cap that gets the ba um, balance here that would be one million one hundred twenty five thousand dollars here credit that so our credits here a uh, balance with our debits here increase in cash reduction in uh, paid in capital by eight hundred and ten thousand here with the three hundred sixty thousand dollar debit here to increase in cash balances with the credit here to common stock power of forty five thousand plus the credit here or increase in additional paid in capital here by one million one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars so we're debits balance with our credits at this point okay so now we come to our last entry here on uh, the company says okay on 11x4 here at the expiration date this is the case here where the uh, executives didn't opt up uh, didn't uh, exercise these stock options they just let them go so what we have to do is we have to remove those stock options we're going to really remove them out of our paid in capital here to a stock options account here and just move them over into another paid in capital account here what we're going to title expired stock options so all we're doing is moving some equity uh, amounts around here so what we would do here for the expired stock options we debit or reduce our paid in capital here by ninety thousand dollars that's really the remaining balance here we had used up eight hundred and ten thousand of the total nine hundred thousand that was credited here to paid in capital for stock options or and then ninety thousand would be the remaining amount here that we would have to remove here and one one x four and you could look at it in this terms too you a total of nine hundred thousand and then one thousand here uh, remain of the total ten thousand we already um, uh, to take a 9,000 out here so the other 10 uh, 1,000 has to be removed so one tenth of 900,000 gives us 90,000 here so debit or reduce our paid-in capital here to stock options by 90,000 then we just move over here to another equity account here uh, on our balance sheet here uh, debit or credit that here for $90,000 so we're just moving from one equity account over into another so all you're doing is you're transferring your paid in uh, capital for the to the expired stock title the inspired stock options here and that's done at the date of expiration here the stock option you're just retitling your paid in capital to understand what went on here okay so we've taken care of the case here where we had some stock options 
remember what you have to do here you determine what the value of those stock options are and then they have to be expensed out um, in this case evenly or whatever the services uh, performed here in this case it was evenly over two years so we have to determine what our compens we call it compensation expense here the value of those stock options so we'd increase that here or debit at as an ex compensation expense here on our income statement and then we needed that balancing entry here to uh, set up this paid in capital account here for our stock options by the same amount here and then what we've done here when we actually when these ex stock options were exercised you actually increase your cash account here for whatever the uh, number of shares issued plus the option price here not the market price but the option price here and then you would have to re reduce your paid in capital here uh, account here on your stock options at that exercise date based on whatever percentage of stock options were exercised based on the total value here that we assigned here to the stock options and whatever that came out to then we reduced their paid in capital by that account by that amount and then uh, we, we we're actually transferring that over into another equity account here and we divided that up here between the common stock par amount here that was being issued here number of shares and then the balance gone into additional paid in capital common stock and a balance was really a balance between your debits here your cash increase your debit here a reduction for your paid in capital here and then the credit here to common stock so the balance goes into additional paid in capital for common stock now for any number of shares here that were not where the option wasn't exercised here by in this case the executives then at the at the date here that they weren't exercised they're expired you remove them out of your paid in capital here to your stock options here on your equity again an equity account here and just uh, move them into another paid in capital here for expire in this case retitle it here as expired stock options so whatever amount expires here you debit it out to this paid in capital account here for stock options and you credit or increase your other paid in capital here for expired stock options okay so that takes care of our example here uh, for issuing remember issuing didn't require any entries here but exercising and the expiration of our stock options did all right, so that's the end of our subject.